Along with the innumerous mysteries that we've come to question about the great beyond, Pluto is most definitely one of them. As we've all come to know, Pluto isn't regarded as a planet anymore. It's been granted the title of a dwarf planet. But what scientists have recently found out about this icy rock makes it one of the most unique celestial bodies in our solar system. So why is Pluto so unique and what makes this mystery so interesting? Before we dive into it, we have to set some things straight about Pluto. So Pluto is the largest known dwarf planet in the solar system and was considered the ninth and most distant planet from the Sun. We all know that, right? This mysterious world is located in the Kuiper Belt, a portion of the solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune, containing hundreds of thousands of rocky, icy bodies each larger than 62 miles or 100 kilometers across, as well as over 1 trillion comets. Pluto, unfortunately, stopped being a planet in 2006 when it was reclassified as a dwarf planet, a demotion that attracted controversy and debate in the scientific and space communities, while it also got its fair share of arguments among the general public as well. To put things into perspective, Pluto is smaller than Earth's moon and has a heart-shaped glacier that's the size of Texas and Oklahoma. This incredible world has blue skies, spinning moons, mountains as high as the Rockies, and it snows, but the snow is red, which really sounds like something that could make a good horror movie. You know, the red snow, get it? Just me? Alright, never mind. American astronomer Percival Lowell first proposed that Pluto existed in 1905 when observing strange deviations in the orbit of Neptune and Uranus. He thought there must be another body whose gravity is tugging on these ice giants, causing these inconsistencies in their orbits. Lowell then proceeded to predict the mystery planet's location in 1915, but died 15 years before its actual discovery. Pluto was eventually discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tombow at the Lowell Observatory based on predictions by Lowell and a few other astronomers. Here's one thing that most of you probably didn't know about Pluto. It got its name from 11-year-old Venetia Burney of Oxford, England, who suggested to her grandfather that the New World get its name from the Roman god of the underworld. Her grandfather then passed the name on to Lowell Observatory. The name also honors Percival Lowell, whose initials are the first two letters of Pluto. On January 14, 2015, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft made its historic flight through the Pluto system, giving us the first close-up images of Pluto and its neighboring moons. It also collected other data that has recently extended our understanding of these mysterious worlds on the solar system's outline. In the years since that flight, nearly every speculation we had about Pluto possibly being an inert ball of ice has turned tables. Alan Stern, New Horizons principal investigator from the Southwest Research Institute, Boulder, Colorado, said, It's clear to me that the solar system saved the best for last. We could not have explored a more fascinating or scientifically important planet at the edge of our solar system. The New Horizons team worked for 15 years to plan and execute this flyby, and Pluto paid us back in spades. Picture a young Earth brimming with liquid magma and molten mass on its surface, not even remotely ready to support life. Well, that was when Pluto and its underground ocean were just forming. For the billions of years since then, liquid plutonium water has remained on the dwarf planet, providing a potential trace of life. That's what a study published in 2020 in the journal Nature Geoscience had to say. How much of it is true, though, we've yet to figure out. The study rewrites scientists' theories about the early history of Pluto and suggests that other liquid oceans that were once thought to be unique to Earth are common on dwarf planets across the outer rim of the solar system. Alan Stern explained further, saying, Oceans are ubiquitous. Most of them are in the outer solar system, and they could be abodes for life. This is a fundamental sea change in the way we view the solar system. 
When the New Horizons spacecraft made its approach to Pluto in 2015, it revealed surface geology so active and complex that scientists thought there would have once been an ocean buried beneath Pluto's thick crust of ice. Those impressions have turned into presumptions in recent years, and presently, most planetary scientists agree that Pluto has a global liquid ocean under its surface. You might be wondering, though, how does a world smaller than Earth's moon have an ocean? And how did it manage to keep it from freezing for billions of years? Well, with the new study, we might just have the answers to those questions. Until now, astronomers assumed that Pluto formed out of cold material glomming together very slowly. As a dusty disk of debris coalesced around our sun, the dwarf planet would have gradually clumped together out of bits of rock and ice. Once large enough, Pluto's internal heat would have melted some of its ice, creating a subsurface ocean. That story works well, astronomers say, as Pluto's underground ocean is explained simply by the decay of radioactive elements. The team behind the research wanted to test that theory anyway, and they wanted to find out whether Pluto started hot instead, and formed through a series of massive impacts much like early Earth. Lead study author Carvin Byerson, a graduate student at the University of California Santa Cruz, says, We understand this picture fairly well from the early inner solar system through meteorites and other things. However, we actually don't have much of a picture for the outer solar system. Scientists have figured out a way to tell whether Pluto was formed hot or cold simply observing the dwarf planet's surface. Researchers have used a pretty straightforward fact that water expands as it freezes and compresses when it melts. As Stern reveals, if you take a glass of water and put it in the freezer, that glass is going to break overnight because when the water freezes, it expands. The same thing is true on Pluto. So, when water freezes, the molecules inside move less and form a crystalline pattern that leaves ice less dense. That's why ice cubes float near glass, and that's why this solid water also expands. It's pretty cool how simple the technique was to figuring this out, especially when we're talking about a celestial body that's over 5 billion kilometers away. With regards to that information, if Pluto started hot and then slowly froze, the planet's surface should have expanded, leaving identifiable evidence of geologic features formed through expansion. On the flip side, if Pluto had a cold start, the dwarf planet's surface should show evidence of compression going back into its distant history. To find out which of these two scenarios fit the data, the team took a closer look at New Horizons' findings looking for signs of either expansion or compression. Let's just say they were surprised by what they found. Byerson explains, We see terrains on Pluto that look to be very old, roughly the age of the solar system, and we don't see evidence of that compression. This suggests that Pluto did in fact have a hot start. An example of this comes from craters. Impacts on an icy world typically form substantially round circles, but over time, Pluto's craters have all been stretched out, even ones that sit in its ancient terrains, and none of them are compressed. There's more evidence as well. Byerson modeled Pluto's early formation using this hot start scenario, and he found that if Pluto formed due to rapid large impacts, the heat from those explosions would continue to build up. This would maintain Pluto's internal ocean in a liquid state, but for that to have happened, Byerson explains that the planet would have formed in around 30,000 years or less. The idea still actually matches up pretty well with other recent models of the early evolution of the Kuiper Belt, a region that we've come to know for its icy objects and dwarf planets beyond the orbit of Neptune. Researchers suggest that smaller Kuiper Belt objects could have formed in just a few hundred or thousand years. Stern continues by saying, It's kind of nice that the geology is telling us this. People trying to understand the Kuiper Belt's dynamics are also coming to this conclusion. The conclusion of a hot start for Pluto is a weird, surprising answer. 
This puts us in a much better position to say that Pluto could definitely have an ocean beneath its surface, but that's not all that was found. There's more. The latest finds could answer some deep-seated questions that suggest Pluto has long harbored an active ocean and another piece of that puzzle only arrived earlier last year. Pluto's icy heart is the planet's most recognizable feature. It's almost like a really recognizable birthmark for the planet. There exists a region on the planet that seems to be what looks like a giant impact basin the size of Texas. The heart's left side consists of a 600-mile-wide or 1,000-kilometers ice plain called Sputnik Planitia, which is the largest glacier in the solar system. And if you're wondering why it's called that, it's because it was named after the former Soviet Union's Sputnik satellite launched on October 4, 1957. When New Horizons first got a good look at this, astronomers thought it must have formed when another large object smashed into Pluto in its past. But researchers eventually noticed the exact location of the basin with suspicion. The region sits on exactly the opposite side of the world from Pluto's large moon, Charon, and because an impactor could have hit Pluto anywhere, Stern says, the idea that this just happened to strike opposite of Charon could be coincidence, but it seems to me too much to believe that it happened entirely by chance. He instead thinks that the alignment between Charon and Sputnik Planitia could be due to a complicated process called polar wander, which is the migration of the magnetic poles over a planet's surface over geologic time. Looking at the models, scientists now think that the massive glacier could have easily slid along the dwarf planet's surface until it sat directly opposite Charon. But here's where it gets really interesting. That model only makes sense if Pluto has an ocean. So, what do you think? Does Pluto really have an ocean under its surface? And what do you think we'll find there? Let us know in the comments below, and like always, thanks for watching Space Rumor.